Hey everybody, it's Pete. Good morning. Welcome to Stock Trading Pro. We got a ton of stuff to talk about today. I think one of the biggest things to talk about today is the back and forth and the market, which is just absolutely driving a lot of people crazy. Not sure which are the best stocks to buy right now. Quite frankly, not even sure if you should be even buying right now, which was actually a big part of our boot camp coaching call last night. We're actually going to go through, as we do, I think every Friday, we're going to go through the questions that we had on our trader coaching call last night. Hopefully to inspire you over the weekend, give you something to think about, give you something to consider that maybe you're doing right now, maybe not doing it correctly. Maybe you can add something that we talked about last night into your plan. I think one of the biggest things last night, actually, John Oaks is here this morning. Uh, John, some great questions on the coaching call last night. I really appreciate that. Really elevates the call when you ask some good questions like that. Uh, let's see. Hey, Jason. Good morning. How's it going? I love that hat, man. <laughs> uh, Andrew, good morning. How's it going? Uh, so we're going to do a little bit of a deep dive into the market. Uh, absolutely one of the biggest things that a lot of traders have been reaching out right now is big difference from 2021 into 2022, how to handle that. Probably one of the biggest things that we discussed last night was whether or not you should even be trading at all, especially as an active trader, especially if you don't have any experience on the day trading side of things. Uh, we're also going to talk about discipline. We're going to talk about fear of missing out. But I do want to jump into a couple of stocks that had earnings last night that are bouncing. Very hard to create a game plan stocks last night. If you if you did your research, if you did your scanning, if you tried to find perfect ideas, you were probably maybe spent a little bit extra time trying to find some good ideas because we have a lot of stocks that are in bearish order flow. Some of them have rallied hard off of earnings the last four or five days, including two stocks we're going to take a look at in a second. Um, so there's some really good short-term bullish catalyst off of earnings, but longer-term bearish order flow. So big picture is down. The most recent few days are up. So you kind of have this battle where there's a really strong news story right now, which most of those right now is earnings versus the last bunch of selling. And actually, even the home builder stocks right now, which should technically be getting hammered the way interest rates are going up. They're kind of hanging out there, which is a little bit interesting. I also want to point out one stock that is still going down, still going down in a really big way, but we are seeing super obvious signs of accumulation. And then I'm going to walk you through a different stock that we called accumulation in on Monday. Hopefully you took that trade with us and we're going to show you what happened after that. It was pretty exciting when you start to see these things unfold. We have a ton of stuff to talk about today. I am really, really excited. And it's Friday. I think I'm really more excited about the fact that it's Friday. You can probably hear it in my, in my voice. I'm going to show you why in a second. All right. Stick around. I'll be back in just one second. Okay. So thank you so much, everybody. Hopefully I'll provide a lot of value for you today. If I do, Please, if I've earned it, do me a favor, click down and hit that subscribe button. We're going to get right into it. I want to get into the two stocks that actually um, reported last night so that we can take a look at them. One of them is DraftKing. And you can see this is really the story that I've been talking about um, for the last, I don't know, last week or so. You can see the big bearish order flow, but you can see where it is now. It's up 7%. Now, yeah. 80 cents, that's not a monster move, but it's still 7%. Now, here's the big thing, because we're going to work our way over into a different stock. One day of bullish order flow is not enough to completely turn something around. However, you have to start somewhere. And remember, if you're a regular viewer of our channel, what we talk a lot about is order flow and volume. Combining those two things is a part of tape reading. So you have to be paying attention to when a stock is going down, and it's going down, pushing and pausing, pushing and pausing. As long as those push downs on heavy volume or to the upside, but we're talking about to the downside right now because we're looking for a reversal. As long as it's pushing down on heavy volume and pausing on lighter volume, you can reasonably expect that move to the downside to still be in place. However, as you're starting to push down, when you start to see larger volume candles and energy candles, which have large bodied candles. So in this case, large red candlestick. So I just want to repeat that. Pushing down and pausing, pausing on light volume. But then you get really big red candles on heavier volume. That's when you have to step up, look at you, put that down in your journal and you say something happened. So the phrase that I want you to learn is the tape changed. That's a big part of trading. That's actually the challenge that a lot of people have had coming into 2022 is they did not recognize that the market changed 
And now they're frozen sitting on some really big trading losses, which actually is a topic that we're going to talk about right over here. Because I want to walk you through uh, last night's coaching call. So you can see um, last night's call was two hours and 31 minutes. Uh, and you can see all of the topics that we discussed last night. We got into it in, uh, in a pretty big detail. We're going to talk about that in a second. But here's the thing I want to talk about. We don't call tops. We don't call bottoms. But... You do need to recognize when the tape has the potential to change, starts with one day, goes to two days, maybe works its way over to an entire week where it changes. And again, we talked about that last week in Roku, where Roku had earnings and you could see the earnings and the rally off of those earnings have been pretty good. So we need to start get, get above this 120 level to identify a potential change of trend. But you can see the price action here. And what we're looking at here, let me get these guys off the screen here. So what we're seeing is well offered, lower lows, lower highs, lower lows, lower highs. But now that changed after earnings. So remember what we're talking about. One day, not enough to change the whole thing. However, two days, three days, four days, and now all of a sudden you have last week's price action, and now you have this week's price action. So this week now made higher highs and higher lows. So that means that somebody now has reversed those four weeks of selling after earnings. So these are the kind of things that you really need to start to notice. Now, again, we talk about it. However much time you want to put into your stock trading business is up to you. But I can virtually guarantee you that the more time you put into it, the better chance you're going to have to have massive conviction. And this is something we talked about last night as well. You will notice more when you do more. And when you gain more experience, you will learn to mitigate your risk, you will lower your risk, and then you'll understand how and when to hold those winning trades longer. So I kind of want to tie this over because we had a great example of this this week in one stock and another one that is forming in. So we're kind of talking about it now. It's May 6th going into the stock that has not done the second part yet. I'm so excited to show you this example because it played out absolutely perfectly this week before it exploded back to the upside for an incredible, incredible trade this week. So I'm going to show you what's happening and what should happen, okay? So that's the first part over here. In uh, First, we talked about DraftKings, okay? Uh, I'm going to get to another stock uh, on the daily chart, which is Dash, okay? So Dash also had earnings last night. You can see it's actually up 6 and $4.57. So again, the difference between Dash and what we just looked at in Roku is Dash still is well offered. So you got a bearish U-turn, which is a bearish momentum candle. Well offered, well offered, well offered, well offered. So we still have selling. What we're looking for is this. We want to see this happen next week in DoorDash. And if and when that happens, where it starts to trade above this week's high and has a higher low, then we could start to consider looking at Dash. So what's kind of cool about this is we're setting up next week's price action based on today's news in Dash, DoorDash. But I want to get you over to the other side. So remember, we're talking about trades that are pushing down, and then we're looking for that big expansion in volume. So I want to pull this chart up. Let me put it on uh, the daily chart first, and we're going to work our way through it. Okay, so we're going to talk about, let me give you the chart right here. Actually, let me pull in the screen over here. So right here is what we're talking about and run you can see it's going down and going down hard now right there last week or uh, this week actually see that big spike in volume right there let me actually zoom that out you can see it right there right look at how big that volume spike was look at that so when you start to see that now this is a part of the scans every day we've talked about this i'm showing this every day a lot of people ask on the questions here how do i game plan how do i get ready for the next day well, the bottom line is you need to start to run some scans. Maybe you want to start to run some scans where you're tracking how many stocks are making new 10-day breakouts, 20-day breakouts, 10-day breakdowns, 20-day breakdowns. Those are the basic ones, right? Which ones are above the 50-period moving average? Those are potential buying opportunities. Which ones are below the 50-period uh, moving average? Those are potential sell short opportunities or stocks to leave alone. However, <laughs> this is my favorite scan by a mile, because this is when the smart money is stepping up, they're doing something, and you need to pay attention. You need to put it in your journal. You need to pull up those stocks. And it's double average volume. Write that down. I'll show you how to pull it up on Finviz. We'll do that in a second, and I'll show you. But this is the thing. 
as this stock that we're looking at right now is going down, it popped up on my scan as double normal volume. As a matter of fact, it was almost triple normal volume. So I wrote it down and I said, this is potential exhaustion. If you don't know what exhaustion is, let's just use two people here on, uh, on the call. Let's say Scott, let's say Scott has a hedge fund and he's short selling 5 million shares of run, just for example, right? And let's say he's got a million left and he knows that he's the only person pushing this thing down. He calls up Daryl, who's another hedge fund down the block in New York City, and he says, hey, Daryl, I've been shorting the heck out of this thing. I'm the only person who's pushing it down. Every time I stop selling it, it starts to drift back up. So I know if I stop, it's going to go against me. Would you like that last million shares that I have? Give me a good price, and we'll put it on the tape. So Daryl's like, yeah, cool. I'll take half a million today, half a million tomorrow, whatever. I'm just using round numbers. And that's how it's negotiated. So what that's known as on Wall Street is a cleanup print. A cleanup print means you're cleaning up that order of all of that selling or all of that buying. The last part of that order is negotiated between two people. So that's what you end up seeing on the charts. So again, when you run these double volume scans, you start to spot these things before you see them in the news. So right here, you can see the previous day, let's say two days ago, the volume was 4 million. And then on this day, it was 9 million. So you can see that it just kept increasing on the way down. So does that mean that you do something yet? No. What we started to say was as it's going down, we want to see is that exhaustion stopping it? So the next day, we actually got another day of exhaustion right there. And look at the size of that volume. That volume on that day was 10 million. So the average, so we did 4 million, 5 million, 9 million, and 10 million. So those are energy candlesticks with exhaustion volume. So if you could imagine that that transaction between Scott and Daryl, there's nothing wrong with it. It's just two people calling up and placing an order and they're doing it. But here's the key. The volume is the first thing that run that scan that tells you something happened. Then you have to go to the chart and say, where is that volume happening on the chart? So first it goes from what we call exhaustion. I labeled it exhaustion in our, in our training program because in my mind, the selling pressure in this case, and it works in the other direction. I'm going to show you a, a trade in the other direction, the same exact thing that happened. The selling pressure is exhausting itself. They were like, okay, that's interesting. Now I'm going to track it over the next few days. Best case scenario, volume stays heavy and it goes sideways after that big heavy volume on those two candles. So I just want to talk about this again, because remember a couple of minutes ago, we just talked about a push down and a pause on light volume. Now we're talking about a heavy push down, and then we're looking for a pause on heavy volume. So remember, a light volume pause implies it's going to continue, nothing changed. A heavy volume pause implies the tape is changing, and then we start to see it hopefully move in the other direction, and we look for signs of moving in the other direction. So I'm so excited, I can't even get the words out fast enough. So here's what we talked about. And again, we talked about this. You got exhaustion, exhaustion. Now, what we want to see next, and again, I can't stress this strongly enough. Yes, we literally said what we want to see next is for this stock to go sideways, heavy volume, and not move. That's what we wanted to see because that is the definition of accumulation. So let's watch how this ends up unfolding. So now we go sideways once twice. And look at the volume staying heavy. Look at this volume compared to all of this volume. So now we have one day, two day, three day, four days, five days of heavy volume. So I stepped up in the community and I said, $19 is going to be the stop loss. 20 is the area to buy. We're seeing obvious accumulation now after exhaustion. That means smart money stepping up. They stopped it going down. The selling pressure is done. They're accumulating the stock in this window and we set up the trade with a $1 risk looking for it to bounce coming out of this accumulation after the exhaustion. So here's what we ended up getting. One, two, three. And we said that the 50 period moving average would end up being the move. And yesterday we had earnings and a big gap up into earnings. Now, was that lucky? Hell no. <laughs> we do the work every day. So I'm going to show you how to do that right now. But I want to show you another stock that very similar where exhaustion was super obvious and it called the reversal to the downside. Now, if it doesn't go sideways or you don't see it um, do exactly what you want it to, exhaustion typically means you move up your trailing stop if it's exhaustion after a big buying push. 
So we're going to show you that chart right now, which was this one. Okay. So we actually talked about it over here. As this was going higher, let me get the 50 period moving average out. As it was going higher, we saw that big bullish gap, massive volume after this big move to the upside. Now, the obvious thing you should be asking, and this is this is actually a really good question because there's another big spike on the chart to the left, the difference between fuel and exhaustion. And yes, I'm corny. I labeled them all that way so it's easy to remember. Fuel is a large energy candlestick that starts a move. Exhaustion is a large energy candlestick that typically ends a move, similar to what we just talked about on that trade between Daryl and Scott. On this side, Scott is buying the stock and he calls up Daryl and says, look, I'm almost done with my order. Do you want the, the last million shares? So that's what ends up happening on the other side. So here's fuel because we're breaking out here. And after these three weeks of buying and this bullish gap, we have exhaustion. So we called out in the community. We literally said EQT has exhaustion. If you are long that stock and you bought that stock, which there was a breakout trade that we called in the community, which was over here at 28, uh, 2628. If you have that, this is a situation where you don't get out because it still might have some room to go. We also have what we call an echo, a bullish echo where you might get one more day, maybe two days before the selling starts to come in. So you don't want to just get out. You want to see if there's a little bit further push. So you move up your trailing stop. So we get a lot of questions about trade management, which we're going to talk about in just a second, because there's a lot of questions on our coaching call last night. So as you're looking to do that and you're in your trade, one of the questions is how do I manage that profit? So you got the gap. Generally speaking, I'll move it up to the candle prior to where the exhaustion happened. So next day, melted candle. Next day, melted candle. So again, energy, melted candle, melted candle, collapse, collapse, collapse. So do you start to see how when you start to put these pieces together, you're no longer lost when you're watching the market. You know exactly what you're looking for. If it happens, great. <laughs> if it doesn't happen, you already know what to do. You either move up a trailing stop, you either scale out of a position or you decide not to get in. This is what separates somebody in 2022 in the stock market from somebody who is out of their mind frustrated right now from somebody like members of our community right now. While the market's not perfect, we're still finding pockets of opportunity every day because we're sitting back all day long. We're saying, yes, not yet. Yes, not yet. Not yet. Not yet. Not yet. There it is. Let's go. Even if it's little pockets of opportunity for day trades where they last for two hours or a swing trade, which in the current market conditions might be three days instead of three months, you have to be able to say, here's what I'm looking for. Is it there? Great. Let's decide to do something. Let's determine risk. Let's determine reward, right? Let's determine position size. Here's what I'm looking for. And it's not there. Well, that's when we do this. <laughs> that's when we dive in and we have, excuse me, <laughs> We have a little bit of coffee because if there's nothing going on, and I don't know if Yvonne's on the call with us right now, but we had a big conversation yesterday on the coaching call about that it's okay to do nothing. I can't stress this enough. I, you know, Wherever you're learning trading from, maybe you're learning from books, maybe you're learning from your own experience. One of the questions that we had last night was around, do I have to trade all the time if I consider myself an active trader? The answer is, heck no. You should be first preserving your precious capital. But the only way to preserve your capital is to be in the market doing your scans, reading the tape, reading the big picture, and then going down into what we call the stock market power pyramid. So the very first thing that we're looking at every day, and I'll, I, you see I have this list over here, which is the sector ETFs. I'm going through the market on a little bit of a bigger picture. Let me put out of the weekly chart, and I'm looking for pockets of opportunity. Then after I look at those pockets of opportunity, I'm going into our rotation from Monday to Tuesday to Wednesday to Thursday to Friday, and I'm looking for opportunity. After I find opportunity, and let's just say, for example, here, then I'll drop down into the group of stocks that have that opportunity. So I can't stress this enough. If 2022 is driving you crazy, <laughs> it is. It's driving a lot of people crazy. The way that we're handling it right now is – Again, this is the way I'm trading. These are for educational purposes, but this is what I walk everybody through in the community. 
there's two things right now. If you're looking to actively trade right now and the market's confusing you a little bit, it's okay to reduce your position size. You don't have to take maximum risk. Look, let's face it. Every deal is not a great deal. So you have to decide right now, is it great? Is it okay? Or should I be going golfing or, or going to get a manicure? Whatever, whatever you want to do when the market's not great. You need to make that decision. There's no golden rule in trading that says, ding, 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 ding. The market's open this week. You have to trade. Your job number one as a money manager is to protect your capital while you're learning better circumstances to allocate your money. So now I want to take you into some of the situations that we talked about yesterday. Okay, so here's the um, here's the coaching call. Okay, you can see yesterday's call was two hours and 30 minutes. So I just want to get into, and the reason I do this, I just want to give you an idea that I always do this on Friday because we have two coaching calls during the week and we have a swing trading session that's live on Sunday. The Thursday night coaching call, which I'm going to show you the questions from last night, they're from newer members in our boot camp community. The Monday night call, kind of more advanced uh, conversations. But I purposely show you these questions on Friday so that you can go into the weekend, maybe come back and watch the video, screenshot it, level up your trading to maybe sometimes you're not considering something. Maybe sometimes you're uh, confused about something. Hopefully we can inspire you on Friday to, you know, to kind of let these ideas fester in your head over the weekend. And then you come back on Monday and you're applying something, hopefully, that we taught you here um, this week. But I want to, before we do that, obviously, I want to get into um, trading ideas uh, for today. All right. So what's kind of interesting here is this. <laughs> this is how challenging the market is right now. Every single day, I do a list of game plan stocks that meet all the criteria, which is over the last four weeks, the last five days. Change from the open yesterday and change from the close. So it has four different criteria to determine whether or not I want to be a buyer of those stocks. So at least I have an idea of these are the perfect ideas, how many of them line up right now and which of those. Yesterday, there were none. That's the kind of market condition we're in now. None of them met all four criteria. So now I'm going to tell, I'm going to give you a second, pull this up on the screen. <laughs> You know what, um, Lance, everybody's having a hard time in the market right now. I, I just, I can't say this enough. Um, you know, you get some, you get some, uh, you get some, you get some, uh, it's easy to tell what somebody else is doing in your opinion. But I, look, I just want to, I just want to say this um, in, a, in, a, in a way that I hope you take this as a friend. And Lance, I've obviously, I've never met you before, all that kind of stuff. This market is driving everybody bananas. If you think that straight up one day and straight down the next day when the market did exactly what everybody was saying uh, should happen but didn't, man, this is a tough tape. This is a tape where you need to be on top of your market. And look, I'll be honest with you, um, you have to have empathy for other people in the market. Some people are brand new. Some people have been trading for a while. Some people are just thinking about getting into the market. So, you know, let's not comment on somebody else's experience in the current market right now, because let's just say it what it is. This is a challenging market right now. So if you're going to join our calls, I really hope that you level up and help somebody who needs help, as opposed to pointing them out what you think is doing right now, because it's, it's really not fair. This is a really, really challenging market, which is why 730 in the morning, everybody's here. We want to learn from each other. We want to level up. So please have some empathy for other people in the in the, uh, in the chat because it's challenging right now. And I'm sure a lot of people are frustrated. So let's please act as a team and not act. Let's not act like the typical Internet person who's hiding behind the camera and hiding behind the, the chat. Let's all just level up and come to these come to these calls looking to help each other, because that's why I'm doing it. And I hope everybody else sees it the same way. Um, but anyway. So in the market there, you can see there's nothing. We do have some other opportunities, which we broke down here. And if you want to take a snapshot of this, these are some of the ideas uh, here. Run, obviously, we've been talking about. WDC had that giant gap from last week. Let me actually, actually this week, which was here where they talked about the company being broken up into two pieces. Roku, we've talked about on the opposite side of the market and some of the energy stocks uh, have been pretty strong. But my point is the size of the list of stocks that meet bullish criteria right now is not massive. 
So what does that mean? That means two things right now. You're either short selling or you are long only. Your list is a lot smaller and you're probably trading for what we call cash flow right now, as opposed to trading for longer term pulls because the bulk of the market is pointing to the downside. So that's the mindset of trading right now. We might get a reversal to the weekend. I don't know. It doesn't look like it the way the market's been trading. So what I'm giving you right now are insights into how professional traders are managing their position size, managing and planning their initial profit targets, and whether or not we're more aggressive buying or short selling right now. And the short selling side of the market has been a little bit more follow through where we're getting better pushes and pauses to the downside. So just based on the size of this list, which is here, it's really, really small. And what's also significant here is there's really no market leaders. Remember, for, in order for the market to rally, you need the large cap stocks, you need the big stocks that move the market that are the dominant part of major indices like the Apples and the Caterpillars and Goldman Sachs and IBM. You need those guys to participate and none of them are actually in that list right now. So what I'm trying to do right now is even when you run your scans, and I want to get to the scan in a minute, when you run your scans, here's the thing you need to say. Like you're running your scans and you're like, I can't find anything. <laughs> when you're doing that, that means something. If you're looking for a lot of opportunities to buy and it's really, really hard to find good opportunities, that's a signal. And that's one that you have to pay attention to, which is I want to tie that into two things. First, I want to give you the double volume scan that I talked about, and then we're going to get into the coaching call questions. So if you're a regular viewer of the channel, you know that we use um, Finviz, right? So Finviz is the um, is the main. So we'll go over to screener and we're going to go over to presets. So you can see one of the primary scans that I run is double normal volume. So I'm actually going to pull this in for you a little bit so you can see the criteria. So when you go to Finviz.com. You're going to go to screener and then you're going to click on all over here. Okay. Now I normally only look at stocks that are over $10. I want average true range and you can see what the example of average true range is there for it to be a dollar 50 and average volume of 2 million. Then I go over here to relative volume, which is over two. So that volume is twice as much as the average. And you can look at the charts and you'll see some big spikes. So actually, I, <laughs> I almost forgot. I wanted to show you the stock that is happening in now. We talked about run going down and going sideways. I want to show you the next stock that's doing something very similar because now, again, let's let's bookmark it May 6th, see if this follows through the same way that run did, and it's Carvana. So let's take a look at CVNA and how that is unfolding and look at this volume. Now, again, if you remember what we talked about in run, it was still going down and we didn't do anything until it started to go sideways. So if we take a look at Carvana as it's going down, look at this volume compared to the normal volume. Down here is the normal volume. This is what it's doing now. So what's kind of fun about this is we can work through this now here as a community. We're like, OK, something's going on. It's still going down. So we're not going to fight the tape. But what do we want to see next? We want to see it go sideways. We want to see that volume stay higher. So we have exhaustion into accumulation, and then hopefully into what would be a new move to the upside. But here's the thing. You don't just jump in and start looking to buy it now because the selling has not finished. We want to spot exhaustion. We want to spot accumulation, and then we want to spot the first time when somebody steps up. Now, here's the key question. If it's going down and all this accumulation is happening on the way down, they're buying on the way down, they're buying on the way and it's going sideways, what would make somebody not start to pay higher prices yet. Well, all that selling is still happening. Retail traders, people who aren't recognizing what's going on, it's still going down. So I'm going to be able to buy it at cheaper prices because it's still going down. People are still willing to sell it to me at lower prices because they're recognizing the charts going down. The big buyer, the Scott or, or whoever else happens to be the big hedge fund, when that selling dries up, they now have to start paying higher prices because it's more important to them to get the shares because of where they think it's going to be in the future. It's more important that they get the shares than the exact price. So we're looking for down. The next move we're looking for is sideways. So let's actually pull that up again. We want to see heavy volume and we want to see, we want to see this kind of price action. But you see, this is light volume. 
We want to see this kind of price action here with heavy volume. If we see that, that is now exhaustion into accumulation. And then hopefully we start to spot when it reverses. Now, the next part is what's the potential profit on this trade if it does bounce? Well, this is a really big move to the downside. So we're going to just pull out a Fibonacci retracement and start where it came from. And yeah, you got to start where it came from. All the way up here is our potential target, which is just above 200. That is a massive, massive move to the upside. Looking at the chart, I would probably say this big wall of resistance would be the first because this is the last place that sellers did something dip significant. But look at that dollar amount compared to where it is. That's a hundred dollars away. Not jumping in the trade yet. I want to be clear about this. We're putting the pieces together. This is what we call building the argument for the trade. Then we script out what we need to see next. We didn't start to get involved in run or call it out as an idea until the smart money had to step up. And then we got that nice five-day move for, I think it was roughly $7, which is pretty good for this current market condition on a $20 stock. I want to walk into the questions from yesterday and give everybody a... Again, what I want you to do, I'll go through this slow. You can screenshot it or come back and watch the video and you could pay attention. To, you could use the questions to inspire yourself to um, uh, to do a little bit better. So let me actually zoom this in a little bit for you. Uh, some good questions on holding overnight when you should hold overnight. So what's interesting about that question is heading it the day after the FOMC, which was yesterday, we had questions about after the fact, should I have held stock overnight? with the FOMC announcement, how much stock skyrocketed to the upside. And the answer across the board was, yeah, <laughs> a lot of people said we were expecting follow through, myself included. Great, got exactly what we expected on Wednesday. Do we get follow through on Thursday or Friday? Yes, that was what we were planning for. It did not follow through. So this trader made a good decision, but the market didn't follow through. Remember, a good decision that does not follow through does not now become a bad decision. Our job is to build that argument. And if it follows through, great. If it doesn't follow through, well, we know what we're going to do. We planned, we scripted it out. And if we have to scale out or get out, we do. Remember, our job is to build the argument looking for follow through. If we get follow through, we know what we plan to do. It doesn't make it a bad idea if it doesn't follow through. Remember, our trading, anybody's trading, is about an edge over a large sample size. If you want to relieve all the stress from your trading right now, stop giving too much energy, positive or negative, to how each individual trade works. You, you drive yourself bananas. That trade didn't work. Ah, that trade did work. Yay! You're gonna, your, your emotions are going to be like a rubber band, and you're going to drive yourself to exhaustion every week. Every single trade is a part of all of the trades that you're going to make this month. When you see that, you say, okay, put on that trade, manage it. Put on that trade, management. That individual trade doesn't control you anymore. It's the sample of trades you're going to make over the month. If you, if you learn anything from me, that will reduce your stress by 200%. All right. So here's the rest of the um, of the ideas. And again, you can screenshot these. Trading a major catalyst like the Fed, obviously a big question. Stacking the order flow to, to gain conviction, another big thing. So I'm going to scroll down here um, so you can take some snapshots of this. I'll, I'll give you a second so you can actually take screenshots, maybe even come back and um, take a look at it. This is a very, very big part of trading that we do, which is reading the market internals to gain conviction. Uh, what it means to be flat, flat means that you either got in and out at the same price or you're not in a position. Uh, we broke down. This is actually a very important one. Um, understanding how to identify a change of trend and when to look for new entries. Um, so you can, again, you can get an idea here if you want. You can come back to the video, uh, setting up watch lists, setting up uh, when, how early in the day should you trade. Um, so again, this this call was two and a half hours, uh, and that was that was just last night's call. So again, members of the community you get at least four to five hours of coaching uh, with me personally. I'll customize all of these as many questions as you have about what we do. We'll stay on the call as long as it takes because I want you to actually learn, and I want you to get out of your head, put it down on the coaching call, so we can have a discussion about it. So. Look, I'm obviously, <laughs> I'm exhausted because last night's call was really long and I get really pumped when we have some really good topics of conversation. So I, I really hope that we are helping you think about trading in a little bit of a different way. And I really hope the biggest thing is this, 
Trading at its highest levels simply means that you're prepared. It's not about predicting. It's not about forecasting. It's about knowing what you're looking for, creating a game plan for what you expect to happen, and then knowing exactly what you plan to do if it was in your favor or against you. But all of that means you need to have a strategy in the first place because out of all the chaos that's going on in the market, when you have a strategy, when you have an edge, the market can do whatever it wants. But when you have an edge, you're only looking for what you need to see. So that means you're eliminating everything else. And that's where trading starts to become easier and fun. Now, I didn't say make money is easy. There's a difference between knowing what to look at and making money. There's a gap between those two. And I think everybody could admit that. Knowing what to look at, there's probably everybody in this call probably knows exactly what to look at on the charts, but it's what happens after that in between entry and exit. That's where the magic happens. And that's where you need to see different market conditions and have these conversations like we do on the coaching call last night. So I have to head out. I actually have to head into our other coaching call, uh, our game plan meeting for this morning. Our next boot camp starts next Monday, not this coming Monday, the following Monday. If you want to learn about what we do and attend these calls, click the link down below in the video. If you click the link in the video that talks about the 14 day boot camp, there's another 20 minute video there that I walk you through everything that we do together so you can understand how I trade. All right. Have an awesome day, everybody. Um, I just can't say enough. 7.30 in the morning, you're here with me. I really, really appreciate it. It shows how much that you really want to learn trading. Uh, if I provided some value for you today, please do me a favor. Click down and subscribe. Uh, that would mean the world to me. And uh, have a great day of trading today. I hope I helped you today. Uh, have an awesome weekend as well. Take care now, everybody. Thank you so much.